Okay, let's talk about this interesting case of a 28 year old female presenting with palpitations and chest heaviness. So, it was a 26 year old female with two hours of chest pressure, palpitations, and weakness. She, didn't, she denied any shortness of breath, nausea, lower extremity swelling, or recent illness. She was basically super healthy. She didn't have any medical or surgical history. She didn't do drugs, not pregnant, not taking prescriptions, and she had allergies. On physical exam, her heart rate is 142. Her blood pressure is okay. Respiratory rate of two sat and temperature are okay. She is well nourished and well appearing. On cardiovascular exam, she is tachycardic with a regular rate. She has no murmurs, rubs, or gallops, and her radial pulses are rapid and weak. Her lungs are clear, her abdomen is normal, and her neuro exam is normal. Her EKG is obtained, which shows a broad complex tachycardia with a widened QRS complex. Okay, so it's a wide complex tachycardia. QRS is wide. There's a right bundle branch block here. There's left axis deviation comparing one and AVF. There's no obvious P waves that I can see anywhere along this rhythm strip down here. Uh, the rhythm is 142, or sorry, the rate is 142. And there's also a left anterior fascicular block. So this patient is diagnosed with idiopathic vesicular ventricular tachycardia. Okay. It's a rare form of re-entry VTAC. Sometimes it's called verapamil sensitive or Belhausen tachycardia. And 95% of cases are posterior with a right bundle branch block pattern, as is the case of our patient. You can have an anterior with a right axis deviation or an upper with a normal axis. Here's an illustration of that vesicular ventricular tachycardia. Okay. Typically, there's an RSR morphology in V1, which our patient does have on a subsequent EKG. The differential is broad initially, but would include sinus tach, atrial tachycardia, AFib, a flutter, a paroxysmal SVT, AV, NRT, AVRT. Lown, Ganong, Levine syndrome, Wolfson, Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, and junctional tachycardia. That's not even a complete list. Typical patient is young, male, and no history of structural heart disease. Symptoms typically include shortness of breath, fatigue, palpitations, and dizziness. Rarely do they have syncope and sudden death. And the tachycardia is typically paroxysmal, but sustained, meaning once they're in that fast rate, it is sustained, not, not coming and going, and triggered by exercise or caffeine. And termination typically requires an abortive antiarrhythmic medication. Much less commonly would be that they have a chronic dysrhythmia. They're incessant and presenting with a myopathy because they've been tachycardic for years. Treatment is IV verapamil, Verapamil not as effective. However, you should be careful on initial presentation using a calcium channel blocker if you're not sure what's going on. Better to start with adenosine, and there are case reports of that terminating the VTAC from the anterior facet. If they're unstable, you need to cardiovert them. And more chronically speaking, radio frequency ablation is highly successful. So, what happened with our patient? Well, she was given adenosine, nothing happened. Got some IV diltiazem, which slowed the ventricular rate. Here is that EKG. And you can see that she's slowed down a little bit. You now see some P waves, which are essentially dissociated from the QRS complex. Okay. And then following that, she actually spontaneously converted to normal sinus rhythm. So the, here's that EKG. And now you see P, QRST, QRST. She's in sinus rhythm. Still a kind of funky looking EKG, but uh, generally not a problem from an ED standpoint. So she was admitted to the hospital on telemetry. She had an echocardiogram, which showed a normal LV and EF. Cardiology started her on flecainide and metoprolol, and she was discharged the following day. So three key points about idiopathic, fascicular, ventricular tachycardia. 
First is a narrow complex VTAC, which typically presents with a right bundle branch block and left axis deviation. The average patient is young, male, and without structural heart disease, presents with palpitations, fatigue, chest pain. And caution is advised when using a calcium channel blocker as first-line treatment if you're not sure what's going on. Rapamil is the mainstay. I would say adenosine is probably better if you are not sure in first-line treatment.